Hello and welcome back to my channel, Angelia Reads. I know I have not been on for about a month, but the holidays just got crazy. And then kids home on school break and I just did not get too much time to film face-to-face -face videos in the quiet, but I am ready and I am back with my December wrap up. So I do have my bullet journal here because um, right now it is January 10th and I cannot remember you know, stuff from yesterday. So yeah, I have my bullet journal here to help me out a little bit. But first I will start with my December stats. And I did read 14 books and my average rating was 3.86. I read 3,473 pages. I have two 2.5 stars, two three stars, one 3.5 stars, five four stars, one 4.5 stars, and three five stars. So I think that that is some really awesome stats. And I didn't, you know, even though I didn't read a ton of books, really my average is like 15, 16 books anyway. Um, I had like a good like average of ratings um, and I'm happy with my reading month overall. So my first book of December, um, a lot of them actually were romance. I will say that until like the last book of the month. So this is a romance heavy month, but there is a horror book as my last book, which was very, very good. So I'm excited to talk about that a little bit. So the first book of the month was The Party Crasher by Sophie Kinsella. And I really did enjoy that one, um, but it was just not my typical kind of rom-com that it was more like a family drama kind of book. And honestly, I was just over everything that was happening in the end. But if you do like family drama kind of books and um, you do like Sophie Kinsella, I would recommend this book. This actually was, I believe, my first book from that author, but I am interested in reading more by her. Then next book was a reread for me. I never reread books unless it becomes a movie. So as you can guess, I reread The Hating Game. I did end up giving this a four stars the first time I read it and a four stars again. Doesn't mean it's a, like a bad book or I was disappointed or anything. It just wasn't a five star, um, but still really good. And of course I had to, you know, read that right before the movie came out. And I of course watched the movie, I think on the night it, it came out on the 10th. So it was a really good movie. I did purchase the movie. And if you want to hear more about my book and movie thoughts, definitely let me know. And a lot of people know this story. It is about um, Josh and Hazel. Now I can't even see, I can't even remember people's names. Um, yeah, that's like my definite flaw. I cannot remember characters' names, but it is a classic office enemies to lovers, workplace romance, and I'm sure a lot of people have heard about it now, especially since the movie came out. Um, next was a short romance that I read for the Sugar and Spice Book Club. This was actually November's pick, but I read it actually in like one day of the of the live and you can definitely read it in one day it is called window shopping by tessa bailey it is her um indie published holiday romance it's very short less than 300 pages it is a grumpy shun sunshine um reversed because the male hero is the one that is the sh sunshine and she is more of like the grump and not as optimistic. She goes up to a window display and she kind of critiques it and he is the boss and owner and he comes up and is like, you know, what is wrong with it? Oh, well, how about we have you redo the window and a, they start working together and it goes from there. It's very short, so I don't want to spoil too much, but I rated that a three star. Now that I'm looking at it, I might bump it up to like 3.5 or 4. It was enjoyable in a quick read and I saved it so I can maybe read it again next year. 
Then next we have a book that I really liked. It was called The Matzah Ball by Jean Meltzer, I think is how you pronounce it. And I really enjoyed this. She was Jewish and she absolutely loved Christmas and she had to kind of keep it a secret. So she wrote holiday Christmas romances and they wanted her to write a Jewish romance. And so there was this party that her like I think enemy from summer camp, I believe it was, through every year it was called the matzah ball and she was like, okay, well, in order to get into the spirit of actually writing this um, Jewish romance, I have to go to this matzah ball and get some tickets for it. So it kind of goes through her trying to get tickets for that and falling in love with him, like becoming friends and then falling in love with him. And it was really good, I highly recommend it. The next book I was really looking forward to reading was I Finally Finished The Fastest Way to Fall by Denise Williams. If you do not know, How to Fail at Flirting is one of my favorite romances. It will be on my top books of 2021. And this one disappointed just a little bit, but I kind of knew it going into it. So this is a slow burn romance between um, the main character and her coach, Wes and i really enjoyed him like it was a really good romance i did rate it four stars so still really good but i was just disappointed and i kind of knew it coming in because it is such a slow burn romance but her and another co-worker are testing out these fitness apps so they are each testing out a different one and she gets connected with um wes as her personal trainer and then it goes from there. They end up talking off of the app, meeting in person. And that's why it kind of was such a slow burn because they were texting and talking through the app and then meeting in person. And um, so, you know, it took a while to build the connection. I still really enjoyed the texting and stuff like that, but I just wish it would have taken a little less time for them to meet and connect um, have a connection, but still very good romance. Do highly recommend and do highly recommend um, How to Fail at Flirting if you have not read that yet as well. Then I read another Christmas romance and this was A Princess for Christmas by Jenny Holiday. I listened to this on audiobook. I gave it a five stars and I absolutely loved it. Like loved it. I'm sad I didn't get to the second book in the series, but I definitely will try to do that next year or maybe do like a Christmas in July sort of thing. And yeah, there's not much to say about this. It's just that classic um, royal kind of trope. And she is in, I think it's New York. And she is just doing some business there. And then he is the cab driver, I believe. And um, she hires him to just drive him, drive her around the whole time that she is there and they connect that way and learn about each other's lives. And I do highly recommend and so glad I finally got to that one this year. And then next is another romance. Of course, like I said, it is all romances until the end here. And this is a second book in the series and it is Wild at Heart by K.A. Tucker. And this took me forever to read. I was buddy reading it, so sorry about that, but I was physically reading it and I just did not want to pick this book up. And I don't know, like I really just wanted to finish it because I am interested in the other books in the series, but I just feel like nothing really too much happened. Kella and Jonah were just living their normal lives. I mean, that's pretty much what it was. Um, but I still do want to read the little novella that comes after and the newest book does come out in January. Um, and this is about a completely different character. So I am interested in it. It is about the vet. But yeah, Wild at Heart, just about Kella and Jonah's kind of normal everyday life. Um, and her being like, kind of lonely so it does kind of go into that about her being lonely since he is out a lot but yeah overall not my favorite three stars and then next I read a little novella and it is called Her Pretend Christmas Date I saw this on Instagram and a couple people's stories and it looked really fun and it was really good I rated it a four star it is by Jackie Lowe and I found it on Hoopla and she goes out on this first date and 
it's not really her favorite. Like she's like, this guy is not for me. He is just like too prim and proper, not really my style. And her parents are like, oh, how'd that date go? How is your, it, like, how is everything? And she's like, oh, he's actually my boyfriend now. And her parents were like, great, bring him to Christmas. And so she's been saying that she's been dating this guy for a while when actually she only went on a first date with him. So that was kind of funny and just a really great holiday novella. Definitely do recommend the audio or I'm sure that the ebook is great as well. And then let me see here. Next, I have another novella. I read a lot of Christmas novellas and this was The Christmas Blanket by Candy Steiner. I gave this a five stars. This was a marriage, I didn't, wouldn't really say marriage in trouble because I think they were already divorced or like getting a divorce, but you know, it's kind of like a reconnection, I would say. And she, they originally split up because she wanted to travel and didn't want to stay in this small town. And she went back to the town obviously because her parents still lived there. So she went back to see her family and get gets caught in a snowstorm. And of course there it is, her ex-husband to help her out of the snowstorm and they reconnect that way. I really recommend this for sure. I loved it and I really wanna read more by this author for sure in 2022. Next is A Cross Country Christmas and that is by Courtney Walsh and this was just a nice wholesome romance, nothing too really steamy or anything, but it still was a good adventure. And she has to go and see her brother because her brother and his wife are going to have a baby and she has no way there. She does not like flying, like the train tickets are sold out, like no way there, except her brother's best friend who she does not like. Um, what I did not like about this is like, she doesn't like him because of a whole miscommunication. And so I wasn't down for that, but overall it was a really good adventure. I do rate that, a th I did rate that a three star, might bump that up to a 3.5 in the end, um, but probably no higher than that. And then I read some more Christmas novellas. So I read Dipped in Holly by Dana Isley, I think. I gave that a five star, just a nice short steamy novella and it is a major age gap. She has at a bar, her boyfriend broke up with her at the bar. And I think it, it does take a place around the holidays. Obviously, I don't think it takes place like on Christmas night or anything, but um, she meets the older guy that is the owner of the bar and they go upstairs to her apartment and just have a nice, fun, steamy night. And there is a second book coming out, so I really hope to get to that one soon for sure. Then I read Her Night with Santa by Adriana Herrera. So good, four stars, just a nice steamy female, female um, novella and really enjoyed that one as well. Definitely would recommend that one for sure. And it is about her and um, Santa's like niece or something, I don't know. And then the last book I read was Stuffed by Kay Sterling. I rated that a three star, not really my favorite book. It just was like a whole bunch of little short stories in each chapter about Santa and it was like male male romance and um yeah it just wasn't like my favorite or anything I would not recommend that I might even bump it down to a two now that I'm thinking about it and then finally my last book of the month and that I ended the year in the month with a five star and that was Near the Bone by Christina Henry I think it is called I think is the author and absolutely love that book. Highly recommend, such a great horror book. And it is about, well, first definitely look up the trigger warnings, but it is main, the main trigger warning is about domestic abuse, but it is about this woman and she is trying to survive with her husband. And they're in the middle of nowhere on this snowy cold mountain. I believe it takes place in Colorado. And there's also like a mystery element and some people didn't like that mystery element, but I was here for it. I was here for that mystery element. Um, and it's a perfect book to read in the winter. I think a lot of people did read it for winter ween. And I don't want to give away too much because of that mystery element, but there is definitely this creature 
that she does not know what it is. Like her husband is like, oh, it's just a big bear. But she finds like the trap and the tracks and everything. And so they are trying to survive from this creature and not get found from it. And also there is some other people that go into the woods searching for this creature. And her husband does not like that there are these other people in the woods searching for the creature because they obviously, she, he doesn't want to be found really and wants to just be left alone. So it is about them dealing with the creature, but also dealing with these people in the woods that that he just wants them to be left alone. And that is pretty much all I'm gonna say about that because of that mystery element. I don't want to give too much away, but it is more of like a survival um, thriller because of the creature and the cold winter. And like I said, it does deal with domestic abuse as well between her and her husband, but overall would highly recommend it. And I can definitely see the hype in this book. A lot of hyped books lately I have not liked, but I can see the hype in that book. So that is all for December. Thank you so much for watching this video and definitely give this video a like and subscribe if you like this kind of bookish content and read simi similar to me. Um, like I said, this was a very high romance month, but I do like thriller and horror as well. And that is all. I hope you have a great day or night whenever you're watching this and I will talk to you later. Bye.